Welcome to the News Review. I'm Press TV. The World Health Organization says that half of all coronavirus fatalities in Europe are thought to have been in care homes, lamenting the incident as an unimaginable tragedy. The WHO says the situation of care home residents in Europe is deeply concerning. Now, this as thousands of care home residents in the UK have already died of COVID-19. In Scotland, 41% of coronavirus deaths last week occurred in care homes. More than 1 million people have tested positive for COVID-19 in Europe, with the death toll standing at some 112,000. Well, that's an unbelievable situation there. So let's get some insight and some more information. To join me will be Jerem Hughes, our correspondent in Brussels, and Yanis uh, Koutsoumetis, European Affairs Analyst, who is joining us out of Athens. Good to see you, gentlemen. To Brussels first, uh, Jerome. Um, you know, we have some of the largest uh, world economies in Europe, and uh, now this is, this is appalling. Half of all the fatalities in Europe coming from nursing homes. That's right now, Behrouz. You know, the data is gathered differently from each country, so it's very difficult to get very specific information on this. But if you look at data gathered by researchers at the London School of Economics, they suggest that you know, in Italy, Spain, France, Belgium and Ireland, between 42 and 57 percent of deaths from this virus happened in care homes or nursing homes for the elderly. And, you know, in terms of uh, the EU countries, the, the most robust data, according to academics, is coming from the Republic of Ireland because they've been monitoring this from more or less the start of the crisis. And there, uh, very good data shows that 54 percent of the deaths took place in nursing homes for the elderly. And so, of course, it does raise very serious questions. I know that what a lot of the groups, the, you know, the bodies that represent nursing homes and campaign groups for the elderly and so on, they're saying that what needs to happen is that we need to see the, uh, the, the nursing homes and the, the care homes for the elderly, however you want to describe them, basically implemented into the mainstream health system so they cannot be seen as any different. There's a differentiation at the moment. And you know that in other words, for example, that the same resources need to be given to nursing homes as you would see, for example, in hospital settings. And talking about, you know, personal protective clothing uh, in terms of as well monitoring how distancing can take place. The big problem with nursing homes is the physical distancing. So obviously, you know, you have you can have very sick elderly people in nursing homes. Maybe it's not clear that they have COVID-19, but then in that case, it's very easy to spread it ac across uh, the rest of this uh, the residential area. And so really it comes back down to, according to the experts, once again, it comes back down to testing. So really there should be a lot, lot more testing in these care homes. Uh, and there, there you can identify the problem and try to isolate some way, because obviously the physical distancing, we call it the social distancing uh, amongst the wider community, the physical distancing in the care homes is very difficult to implement. And so, uh, of course, more resources need to be uh, need to be focused on this. These are the most vulnerable people because the elderly, of course, if this was a virus, you know, we've, we've all been caught unaware to a certain extent. If this was a virus, a virus only affecting children, then obviously you might see a similar situation with, with schools until they identify that problem. But with, mm -hmm. with elderly people being particularly vulnerable, obviously nursing homes, care homes for the elderly, really they are a hot spot in terms of this problem and it needs to be sorted out. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to Athens. Giannis, uh, what should European governments do? I mean, should they just uh, prioritize among the patients of COVID-19 and just forget about, uh, let's say, the elderly and senior citizens just because, because we are hearing such reports, just because they are more vulnerable? Uh, so let them just simply die. They have the strongest economy, so they should also have the most efficient health system in the world. Well, uh, we've seen uh, from the start of the pandemic that there uh, have been a fragmentation of policies around uh, European countries, uh, different policies for, for 27 or 28 countries. We've seen the Swedes uh, being more uh, flexible, more liberal in the way they have treated the pandemic, whereas other countries like Eastern European and uh, Greece uh, especially were able to prevent uh, large scale um, death tolls uh, among the citizens. I think the problem lies in, as your, as the colleague said in Brussels, there was lack of protective equipment, there was lack of uh, social distancing, and there was lack of care in this uh, 
uh, nursing homes that uh, would uh, enable the elderly people to be more protected and not uh, suffer these uh, consequences. Okay, let me go back to Brussels. Uh, Jerome, you talked about the uh, maybe shortage or lack of uh, uh, PPE, personal protective equipment, but Europe has the money, it has the resources. You know, in Iran, we are under sanctions and we don't have that severe problem. We're just going on a downward trend. So uh, what can you think of, I mean, to kind of justify this? Well, Behrouz, as we speak, we have the uh, EU leaders are holding a video conference and it's being coordinated from the building beside me here in Brussels, mm -hmm. the European Council building. And these are the type of issues that are going to be raised because if you look at countries, you see there was an issue at, at the beginning when Italy was asking for more help, when Italy was the epicenter of the situation, Italy was pleading for more help from other EU countries in terms of protective equipment, in terms of ventilators and so on. And at that stage, Germany and France, they effectively closed their borders. So it was even difficult to get lorries with equipment from one country to another. So, there, you know, the, the European Commission, which, of course, is more or less the coordinator of the entire European Union system, um, it has put its hands up, mea culpa, and said, look, you know, things were, were bad at the start. There wasn't enough solidarity shown. Um, and the European Commission was trying to engage countries like uh, Germany and France before France was very badly hit itself to try and do more for Italy and so on and and then Spain became heavily impacted and there was just a lack of solidarity you know but I mean we have to look at this as well in a, in a societal point of view I don't want to be um, too cynical but for example in Ireland I asked a, a health uh, professional a, a, health, a health official with the government I asked, you know, how many of these, if you have one third of the residents in a, in a nursing home who have been diagnosed with COVID-19, mm -hmm. in terms of the other two thirds, how many of family members relating to those residents came in and actually brought the elderly people out of the home and brought them home? Of course, that's not always possible, but his answer to me was zero. So this is not just an issue for, you know, nursing home management, for governments and whatever else. We also generally have to ask ourselves, how much value do we place on, uh, on elderly people in general? Exactly. Now back to Athens. Uh, Bianis, uh, uh, at such hard times, usually countries get together and try to reach out to each other and also to provide some help and support and contribution to help solve such problems. In Europe, this is not happening. They're getting even more divided, aren't they? Well, in the first weeks of the pandemic, in recent days, we've seen some minor signals of more uh, solidarity uh, being shown, but the main problem is that Europe was not self-sufficient in the production and uh, distribution of protective equipment. So every government was terrified that it was lacking the necessary protection. So no one was willing to lend any equipment to another country. So it uh, came to the point when everyone had to save his own soul in order to survive in this situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, appreciate your comments. We had uh, Jerome Hughes, our correspondent in Brussels, and Yanis Kutsumitis, European Affairs Analyst, who joined us from Athens. And with this, we come to the end of this uh, news review. Thank you for watching.